let's talk about the princess for a second now. The, the responses from Harry and William were interesting and have, have sort of raised conversation. But do you think that they were bypassed from this decision-making process? Uh, the silence is interesting. I mean, Harry didn't. From what I gather, he hasn't even sort of said congratulations on a, on a 70 year reign, not even a sort of, you know, repost of the Queen's statement as, you know, our servant, which is how she signed herself off. And, and I thought that was a sign really that he's got himself in a bit of a knot, hasn't he? He's a bit, he's a bit rabbit in headlights at the moment. What, what do you reckon, Richard? I just think, I mean, wasn't it incredibly selfless of the Queen to make this announcement? It was her big day, it was the accession day, it should be all about her. And instead, she's made it about Charles and about Camilla. And it really seems to say so much that, you know, all the headlines then became about Queen Camilla. And it's, it's really why we valued the Queen so much. I mean, I, I think with Harry now, it doesn't really matter. You Do you know, not think it matters what, what the, you know, particularly the next King thinks about this? I think um, certainly it does and I think we've had supportive noises certainly been reported that it's something that William supports but in, in Harry's case I think the book will be um, there will be revelations it's all going to be about his feelings about his marriage about um, his parents marriage and how that affected him so it is going to drag it all up again but I think this announcement by the Queen means that that's kind of by the by. It's not, it won't have any you, great impact. I wonder to what extent the Queen, I mean, I know we hold her up there as exemplary and 70 years of service, etc. But she doesn't also feel some remorse that, you know, times have now changed. Looking back, you know, she couldn't be expected to lead that change. That's not really the role of the monarchy. But I, I do think there's a bit of compassion around what happened to Charles. Or do you think that there's just a bit of resignation that she can't... You know, t times have moved on around her. What, what does it say about the state of modern monarchy and the times we live in? That well, she's it's, a bit, it's, it's been a really tough gig for the Queen. She has lived in peace times and naturally is sort of the leader, the colonel in chief of the army. You know, that, that you know, weirdly, war always perversely benefits a monarchy, in, in, especially if, a victorious war. Whereas the Queen's had not only peace times, but massive never seen before social change. So it's not just Charles, remember, it was her sister, Margaret. Yeah. It seemed crazy within a matter of years that Margaret hadn't been allowed to marry Peter Townsend. And the same again. And then, the, and of course, the, the, main, the main victim was Diana. But Charles was also kind of, but I mean, there was a bit of weakness there as well. He could have arguably led, but look how Edward tried to lead on the, on the front of who he wanted to marry and he ended up turfed out. It's, it was a real tricky one. I don't normally sort of like get in with my awe in these things, but. My opinion on this is I feel like it's one of the greatest love stories of modern times. They were, they've clearly been in love all this time. Don't you have any sympathy for the fact that this is the couple who should have been together all along? Well, they are together and she... They are, oh, so Richard, let her be queen. The queen. Where's your yeah. compassion? Yeah. This was unrequited love. This was kind of... I mean, if we look at M Meghan and Harry as victims of the institution. Arguably, Camilla and, and Charles and Diana as well, they were all victims of this rigid institution. There was still this weird idea in the 70s you had to be a sort of fairy virgin princess. Well, I think Camilla was always going to be queen. You know, if you're married to the king, you are the queen. That, that was the way it is. They just came up with this sort of formula of, oh, she's going to be princess consort. And it seemed to be just a sort of bit of an underhand way of getting well, round Well, that's the thing. Don't you think that was a placating placeholder yeah. for society to, yeah. to warm up to her? Yeah, and Charles yeah. Never, um, never liked that. And, I mean, we heard from Harry and Meghan, I think one of their bugbears was that... Um, Charles seemed to care far more about acceptance of Camilla than he did, you know, any of their problems. But of course, because that takes precedence, they're going to be the next king and consort. But, but it's interesting because I don't know a single person with divorced parents who then, the, the, you know, they, the, the mum or the dad acquires a partner. It's inevitably you try and oversell the person that you've later on in life fallen in love with and the children are like, oh, stop selling your partner to me, dad. You know, that is just standard family stuff, mm. isn't it? That is all we have time for in our YouTube version of the show today. But for more royal news, views and videos, you can head over to Mail Plus and subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye.